Hey guys, it's Julie with Julie's Designs. This is a DIY for resale video where I show you what I made, I tell you how I transformed it, I'll put a before picture, if I remember to take one because you know sometimes I get excited and forget to do that, and then if I have a detailed video on exactly how I made it, I will leave that in the description below in case you want to check out the step-by-step -step tutorial. All right, let's start with the stuff that belongs for me because occasionally I do flip stuff for myself. That is how all this got started, just doing it for myself and then it just has kind of grown from there. So if you are just doing it for yourself, that is totally good. That is like the perfect way to get started. And then what, if your stuff is really great, you're gonna see, people are gonna ask where you got that from, if you can make one for them, it just kind of snowballs. All right, look at this thing, how huge. If I was going to resell this, I would probably ask about $65 for it. It is ginormous. It is filled with lavender. I do have a video on how to make this, and this has a very funny story that I shared on Instagram. If y'all do not follow me on Instagram, I love posting stories just about little behind the same uh behind the scene things so this was actually i'm pretty sure a waste basket it was just a brown basket but it wasn't the right color brown so i painted it with white chalk paint and just lightly distressed it it is for me i don't like my stuff heavily distressed so i lightly distressed it i filled it with two cans of foam it took two cans of foam for this one and i don't know how many lavender picks if i had to guess it was probably four so that would have been like fifteen dollars of lavender and i paid four dollars for the basket plus oh lord i'm about to do math on youtube okay and then two cans of spray foam that was probably six dollars let's just say i spent 25 dollars to make this piece for myself i would resell it for 65 that is cheap if you would go buy this at the store you would probably pay over a hundred dollars for this it's beautiful. I want to put it next to my fireplace that I don't have yet, but I'm planning on doing. So I need to find another place for it at the moment. But yeah, that thing is great. And that's one of the things I love about what I do is if I have something in my head, I can just go out and make it. Actually, I did make something else this week. I'm looking at it over there. So in my kitchen, I wanted a sign that said La Cuisine. Well, I just made one for myself. It would probably cost me $30 to go get one at the store, plus the time it would take to go to the store. And it's just so awesome that I can just make whatever I want when I have an idea for something. So these are also for me. These were on a recent thrift haul video. And the top and the bottom was dark brown. And I just painted it with white chalk paint with my paint sprayer. I distressed it a little. And I have it up on my kitchen cabinets in here. There's two different sizes. I'm not going to try to hold them up both at the same time because I will drop one. But they are so cute. I decided to fill mine with some lemons. But you could put whatever in here. They would also look great in a bathroom. So cute. So for now, these are mine. When I have enough of them, then I'll pass them on. Those are the two things I am keeping for myself. The rest of the stuff was either custom orders or just stuff that I made for resale. These I made right before Mother's Day. I thought they'd be good Mother's Day gifts. I have two different wood backgrounds. This one's like a little more white and this one is a little more blue. So if you watch my video on the baby's nursery, her ceiling is this blue wood and I had a bunch of cutoffs left over. So I just cut them all up. I think I ended up making 17 of these. I just made as much wood as I had. So like that is another check mark off my list. All that wood is gone. I'm selling these for $20 each. So I put three pieces of wood together. This is how I put them together, just a light piece of wood in the background, and then it has a hanger, so you can hang it, or you can put it up on an easel, and then I attach the oysters using Gorilla Glue Hot Glue. That is the best hot glue. It really helps these things stick, and then I, once it's on the wood, you can, you can, 
paint your oysters ahead of time but I like to just do it after because I'm very picky about what oysters I use and are they the right size for what I want to do. So I do it after. I glue them. I attach them. I let them dry overnight before I mess with them again. That way I know the glue has really held. Then I spray them with a very high gloss spray paint. I just stick some tissue paper in between here so it doesn't get on my wood. And then I come with a gold paint pen and i do the edges y'all doing the gold paint pen just makes all the difference in the world it just really makes these oysters pop i'll put a link in the description below to my favorite paint pen i mean this paint pen looks like gold and it's so easy to use you don't have to take out a paintbrush or anything everything's already there you just have to open the pen i love this paint pen it also works good if you want to do letters or anything but my favorite is to do the oysters and i've already sold most of these i have a few left and both colors were equally as popular whenever i do oyster art it always sells really well okay so i have some hardcover books in kind of weird colors that haven't sold y'all this is so cute so what i did was i just took off the hard cover and it left like this perfect like shabby chic looking texture color i don't even know what to say about it it's so cute it fits in so many styles and i just put some twine around it and a little bit of greenery and how stinking cute is this i love it so i have a few more books it's like time for them to go i'm clearing stuff out i know i say it on every video but i'm clearing stuff out so these hard books have not sold they're just not the right colors the vintage colors so i'm just gonna take off the hardcover and sell them like this i love this love this totally put that in my house i'm not keeping that set i might keep one set but not that one okay i have a video on how to make these this is a spindle and then this is like a breadboard that i made and then you marry them together to make one of the cutest things that i have ever made how adorable is this? I wanted to keep two of them for myself, but they all sold. And I use old wood. This is Cypress. You can new, use new wood, but I have old wood available to me and you just can't recreate the character. You can try and I do, and I do pretty good at it. But when I can get the original thing, that's what I like. Like look at this piece. It had like some kind of hardware on it that left a stain. I just love that. Look how good it looks with all my stuff. So, so pretty. Um, do I have prices on these? I don't know. These are 22. I know that. So I measure from here to here, not the spindle part, and I charge $2 an inch because these do take definitely some extra time to make, and they are super special. So I charge $2 an inch for these boards. I made eight of them, and they all sold immediately. So that was kind of like a click moment for me because lately I've been shopping a lot and when I shop, I buy smalls and then that's what's in my face. And then like I want to hurry up and flip them and get them out the door. But I kind of forgot that people love my woodworking and that's what they really come to me for. So I went ahead and I picked up all my smalls, put them up in the attic, not for long, but just to get them out my face for a minute and I want to concentrate on woodworking again because I definitely want to make some more spindle boards and some other stuff that I have in my head. I'm going to get back to woodworking for a little bit, which I'm sure my customers will be excited about. Okay, this was a little glass uh, jar. I'm pretty sure this was on a thrift video, but the top was weird. Like it looked like something was missing off the top. And I always pick up these little decorative finials when I find them just in case I want to have them to stick stuff on and this was perfect so I just painted this white distressed it glued it with some Gorilla Glue clear grip that is my favorite and I'm gonna sell this one for $12 this one is already sold now I'm not like making much money off of this one because what happened was if y'all watched my video where I went to Ikea like it's been about a year now I bought a light fixture well, I did not realize at Ikea that you have to buy like the electrical part separate. So 
there was like a hole up here for the electrical and I just ended up paying $15 for a glass thing <laughs> and I didn't have the electrical for it and I live six and a half hours away from Ikea so I was like all right well that was a bust what I decided to do was a finio that I bought I glued it on there and then I made a cypress base for it and it is absolutely adorable. I did not know it was going to come out this cute or I would have kept it for myself. But my customer saw the pieces and she's like, what are you going to do with that? And so I explained it to her. She's like, okay, well, I want it. <laughs> so it was sold before it was even made and I sold it for $25. So cute. So cute. I would not go to Ikea and buy these for $15 and do this though. It is not worth your money. It is just something I had and I was never going to use it as a light fixture. So I just made the best of a bad situation and just got my money back basically for that mistake. So if you go to Ikea, you have to buy the electrical part separate. <laughs> I should have watched some YouTube videos before I went to Ikea. That would have been very helpful. So this is something that has been up in my attic for a while and I just took it down and sprayed it and I don't know why I haven't done this a long time ago. I feel like this is gonna sell so super fast. I'm selling it for $18, it's really big. It's perfect if you're trying to do a basket wall. In your house, it was this blue color, painted a white, distressed it slightly and it is absolutely perfect. I tried to find a place for it in my house but I do not have one so it's gonna go off to a new home. Okay, this basket was also in a recent thrift haul, and this came out so cute. I need to do some more black. Y'all you know, know I kind of stay away from color, but this came out so good. This is so perfect for our little boys' room. It's very modern farmhouse. Like, I find when you just put dark wood together with black, it's just modern farmhouse. That's what it looks like. So cute. So, I actually, I taped off the wood. And then my plan was to paint this white, but there was red strips here. Y'all, the bleed through was insane. I finally just gave up and I'm like, you know what? This is going black. I tried. I tried. I put mini coats of shellac. Then I went back and with the white paint and I was like, this is not happening. This is wasting my time. But I am so happy because I love this. And I'm like, I need to do more black. This really looks great. And I actually have a lot of black in my house. Like it's something that I decorate with a lot. I just, I don't know, for some reason I don't do it often when I'm making items. So yeah, more black coming. Y'all, I didn't break nothing. I didn't break nothing. It's okay. Oh my God. How about I move the glass stuff over here? Y'all know I'm clumsy, so I went to sitting down while doing these videos because y'all were so worried I was going to break stuff. Right. I'm just clumsy no matter where. Don't matter if I'm standing up or sitting down. I feel like it is better when I'm sitting down, but, you know. Okay, deep breath. Let's get back to the video. Okay, this is so cute. I picked this up so long ago, and I loved the print in it so much it is this beautiful little bird print y'all know how i feel about birds but i like the lightness of it sometimes you find prints and they're very dated or they're like yellow you know what i mean and this one was just perfect and all i did was i made a new mat for it and i painted the frame i mean yeah i painted the frame so it's in its original frame i just updated the whole thing by painting the frame and putting it in a new mat and it is beautiful i'm gonna sell this for 18 dollars this one was hard not to keep, but I just don't, I don't have a place for it. My walls are very decorated. This was in a recent thrift flip video. I love how this came out so much and it has led to some other ideas that I want to do soon on videos because this, this thing is cute. I'm going to be selling this piece for $40. It was a Cypress cabinet that I turned into a tray and I use spindles as handles and it is massive and I wrote gather on it, but it's like a little bit distressed. I love this, love everything about it. And I'll put the link to that video as well. This was a little cross that was on a recent haul video 
And I don't do crosses often, but I really like the shape of this one and the pattern it had on it. And it was, you know, all dark. And I just knew if I painted it white and distressed it, it would be oh so cute. And it is for $14. Someone's going to love that. Oh, let me reach back here. This was on the same video as a tray. So I did a video doing cabinet doors. And this was like a little cabinet door where I put some old book paper in the background and then using IOD stamps, I stamped a cute little B on it. Um, I did do a B because my last name is B, but I'm not going to keep this. And lots of other people around here have B's for the last name. So I'm going to sell it to one of my customers for $25 and it has a beautiful color to it. I staged it hanging in my foyer and it did look so cute there somebody's gonna love that let me grab this other one I did on the same video while we're doing this so you will probably be seeing more copper from me because I really really like this this I did an aged copper effect using these letters I made these using IOD stamps and IOD clay and it came out so so good and I just decided to do a fresh white coat of paint on here, not distress it, not anything. That way the words are what really stand out. And it says La Cuisine. Somebody's going to snatch that up. Oh, what's the price on that? That one's $35. I might have priced that one too low. That's a nice sign. Okay, next I have some pictures. Where's the other one? Let me grab it back here. It's a set. So if you are picking up vintage books, you need to be looking through your books to see if there's amazing vintage pictures. So this is some shells and I love the color on them. This will look good anywhere in a house, but I think this would look so pretty in a master bathroom. So I recently thrifted these, this set of picture frames. And they were very dark, but they had lots of detail. So I knew they would look amazing, painted up white, distress. I put a mat in there with these beautiful vintage prints that I have. I have this kind of stuff all over my house. I love this look. Love it, love it, love it. It is $35 for that. I am sorry if I say I love it. It's cute. Way too much. I can't help it because I like everything that I make. And I think it's cute. <laughs> but if you want to suggest some other words that I can throw in there, I will try that. <laughs> okay, these pocket walls. So I'm about to actually post these to, for my customers to sell because they're $20 and under. And I feel like it's the perfect gift for Mother's Day. I don't know when I'm posting this video. It might be after Mother's Day. But that is why I made these. I was trying to find gifts that were $20 and under. So I made the oyster crosses and I made a bunch of these wall pockets. I made these in a video and I'll put a link to that. But this time I did some ticking stripe ones. So how cute is that? I did. So this is actually the back of the ticking stripe and then I turned it over and this is a pocket. So you could put mail, you could put floral, you could put, I think this would be so cute in a kitchen. You put like a little tea towel and some wooden spoons and that is adorable. I painted some white with the ticking stripe. And yeah, I think I just showed y'all some new ones that I made because I've showed these before on a DIY for resale. But I am loving the ticking stripe and I had picked some up at a thrift store so I'm trying to use it. These were the original ones that I made with the drop cloth underneath and then the lace on top. These have sewed well. It's kind of like that rustic look with, you know, a little more dainty vintage look. And then this one was drop cloth with just a piece of lace. How cute. I should have at least styled one of these to show y'all, but y'all go watch that video. Well, I think that is everything that I made this week. I have been working really hard, not only to quickly flip the new stuff that I bring in, but I'm also working on getting rid of all the back stock. So I was super excited just to get all these things done. Y'all leave a comment below and let me know what was your favorite item that I worked on this week. And if you are interested in a step-by-step -step tutorial 
on any of the projects I showed you today, make sure you uh, check the description below. A lot of these I have done videos on. This video is just kind of like a quick before and after of everything that I made. So if you love thrift flips, if you love thrift store shopping, or you love these kind of videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I do them every single week. Y'all have a great day and I will see y'all on the next video. Thanks for watching and give this video a big